How Escape Room 2's ending twist creates a big franchise problem. Escape Room 2, Tournament of Champions ends with a fairly clever twist but unfortunately said twist presents a major franchise problem going forward. The first Escape Room became a sleeper hit in 2019 overcoming mediocre reviews by critics to become a hit with audiences earning $155 million on a $9 million budget. After several COVID-19 related delays Escape Room 2 finally hit theaters and while the sequel might not have been the financial powerhouse the first movie was its makers clearly intend to bring the world in Escape Room 3 based on the Escape Room 2 ending. After another movie full of Zoe, Taylor Russell, and Ben, Logan Miller, staying alive despite trap after trap constructed by the Minus Company the Escape Room 2 ending twist reveals that everything in the sequel up to that point had been done to convince Zoe that Minus had been caught and get her and Ben into the plain escape room that was constructed at the end of the original. The twist while feeling a bit cheap is pretty well pulled off. The problem is it makes Minus entirely too powerful to the point where anyone ever beating them seems ludicrous. Escape Room Tournament of Champions ending features surprise character returns major twists and a link to the first Escape Room movie's ending. The ending of the Escape Room, Tournament of Champions was filled with twists and turns and it significantly altered the direction the franchise could potentially take. After the movie made many references to a girl named Sonya it's revealed that Sonya is the daughter of Amanda from the original Escape Room movie. The sequel retcons the ending of the first film to reveal that Amanda survived and has been designing escape rooms for Minus ever since. The sinister activities of Minus A are revealed to the world and it seems the company will be brought to justice. Amanda then shows up and begins working with Zoe to help her and Ben escape. After the pair manage to free Ben from his cage, which had been filling with water, they then contact the FBI. In a turn of events that felt surprisingly uplifting for a sequel to Escape Room the authorities managed to retrieve the bodies of Theo, Brianna, Rachel and Nathan. The sinister activities of Minus A are revealed to the world and it seems the company will be brought to justice. There is then a final tacked on moment when Zoe on a plane home with Ben is caught up in a last minute Minus Escape Room. To facilitate the Escape Room 2 ending twist Minus proves itself capable of doing everything but manipulating reality itself and with its vast resources it can even nearly do that. By the end of the highly anticipated horror film it's clear that even the psychiatrist Zoe and Ben visited about their prior experiences was in Minus pocket. Picking up from there from the moment they enter New York City and visit the Minus building they're manipulated and pushed into position for the next game by Minus. Even the events within the game which ostensibly should be harder for Minus to predict end up with Zoe escaping through an alternate route they clearly intended her to find and Ben getting sucked into the quicksand enabling Minus to use him as a bargaining chip with Zoe. Even the events within the game which ostensibly should be harder for Minus to predict end up with Zoe escaping through an alternate route they clearly intended her to find. According to the surprise returning character in Escape Room 2 Amanda, Deborah and Wall, who it turns out survived the first film due to yet more minus manipulation tactics. This entire game was put together to convince Zoe to become a game designer for the company herself assuming anything Zoe was told during the game can be trusted. If that's true though that means Minus casually orchestrated that a bunch of former winners would end up on the same subway train at the same time and without anyone else on it just to play a game for the purposes of deceiving Zoe and Ben and getting the duo into the coming plane trap. That is a level of control over outcomes that would leave most movie villains in awe. At this point Zoe and Ben's battle doesn't feel winnable. In fact it feels hopeless not only for Escape Room 2 but for Escape Room 3, as well. Returning cast members Taylor Russell and Logan Miller join four new players in horror sequel Escape Room, Tournament of Champions. Escape Room 2's Minus is probably far too powerful in the regular ending but the movie also has an extended cut that adjusts this issue. Instead of placing the focus on the plane twist the alternate version of Escape Room 2 heavily features Claire, Orphans Isabel Foreman, the true mastermind behind the games who killed her parents after they tried to take credit for her creations. Not only does the Escape Room 2 alternate ending reduce the near supernatural omnipotence of Minus effectively by making the movie more about Claire but it also very directly sets up the antagonist for Escape Room 3. 
If the franchise wants a shot at continuing past Escape Room 2 this compelling new antagonist is a great way to do so. The ending of Escape Room, Tournament of Champions and especially the alternate extended cut seem to strongly hint that Escape Room 3 would arrive to turn the duology into a trilogy. The core premise of Escape Room clearly has franchise potential and like the Saw movies only really seems limited by how many different traps filmmakers can dream up. However despite Escape Room 2 arriving several years ago and making over $65 million at the box office on a budget of only $15 million, via box office mojo, Escape Room 3 still hasn't arrived. Director Adam Robidal did hint in 2021 that Escape Room 3 was a possibility. Speaking to Nightmarish Conjurings Robidal suggested that the only thing holding back a potential sequel was the budget and audience interest. We'll see. I always say let's see if there's a desire for it. It all comes down to bucks as they say. However this was several years ago and there's been no solid news on Escape Room 3 since. Adam Robidal, who also appeared as Gabe in the first Escape Room, hasn't directed any movies since either. This may actually be good news for Escape Room 3 though as it means he's not distracted by other projects. It seems that the fate of a sequel to Escape Room, Tournament of Champions rests on the wishes of Columbia and Sony Pictures the studio and distributors behind the franchise. The sequel to the 2019 horror thriller film Escape Room, Tournament of Champions returns to the world of deadly escape rooms with the two prior survivors Zoe Davis and Ben Miller. Having discovered that they were just participants in a game of the darkly satirical shadow organization that observes the games for fun Zoe and Ben decide to put a stop to their twisted designs. However while en route to confront their foes they quickly realize they've entered yet another game with even higher stakes. We want to hear from you. Share your opinions in the thread below and remember to keep it respectful. This thread is open for discussion. Be the first to post your thoughts. Gary Larson's The Far Side needs an animated movie adaptation and the comic strip's forgotten 1994 TV special proves that this could succeed. Legendary filmmaker and producer George Lucas explains some of the reasoning behind him selling the Star Wars franchise to Disney in 2012. Kevin Costner recalls his experience meeting Matt Damon and Ben Affleck as teenagers when they both acted as extras on Field of Dreams. Obi-Wan Kenobi is one of the most important characters in Star Wars yet one confusing aspect of his story has yet to be fully explained. A new reveal surrounding Adam Sandler's movie's performance on Netflix highlights the exact reason why Happy Gilmore 2 is happening on the streamer. Furiosa, a Mad Max story brings back many iconic characters from Mad Max, Fury Road and here is each one that appears in the prequel movie. Tom Cruise was once rumored to be done with Mission, impossible after the eighth film and it would be best for him and the franchise to end now.